When connecting to a web service, your computer communicates with a DNS resolver. In its cache, the resolver holds resource records with information about the domain that you are accessing. A resolver clears records in cache using a value called time to live, abbreviated as TTL, which is a numerical field used to keep track of how many seconds a record should be cached for. Time to live was originally introduced in RFC 791 where the internet protocol was defined, explaining how time to live behaves in it, introducing this idea. In RFC 1035, section 3.2.1, time to live for DNS records is defined and functions much the same, telling a resolver or DNS server how long to cache a resource record for. The time to live field of a resource record is a 32-bit signed integer, which is big enough to last for years, the most time to live values are between 300 to 86,400 seconds, or in simpler terms, five minutes to one day. If any changes are made to DNS records before the cached records are destroyed, then a resolver might return the cached records information and not what currently applies. Let's go through the steps of a record's lifetime in DNS. The first step to a DNS record's life is its creation, which begins on the authoritative server. It starts when you set up the time to live value, which we will call TTL0. It tells the caching resolver how long to consider the record as valid. When a resolver or client queries for the record, the authoritative DNS server replies with the record, along with its time to live value. When a resolver receives the record, it also stores a timestamp indicating when it was received. It now uses the time to live value as a window during which the record is considered fresh. The effective time to live is calculated based on the elapsed time. The effective time to live value for the cached record is computed as the initial time to live value minus the elapsed time since the record was cached. The elapsed time itself is calculated as the current time minus the timestamp saved when receiving the record. As real time passes, the effective time to live value decreases until it reaches zero. It depends on the DNS setup, but sometimes the record might get forwarded to another resolver. In this case, the time to live value that it receives is the remaining time to live value that the current resolver has. While the time to live value is greater than zero, if subsequent queries are made for the record, the resolver returns the cached data. This reduces load on authoritative servers and speeds up responses for the client. Once the effective time to live expires or reaches zero, the cached record is considered stale. The next query for that record will force the resolver to request a fresh copy from the authoritative server, restarting the cycle with a new time to live value. Now that we know the life cycle of a record, we can see it in action. First, the record is created on the authoritative server. Next, when the client asks the resolver to return the address associated with the URL, the resolver queries the authoritative DNS server. Then, it stores that record's time to live value alongside a timestamp of when it was received. The time to live value decays as the time continues to elapse, and during this time the resolver uses the record to return the cached data. Once the effective time to live reaches zero, then the resolver is forced to query the authoritative server again for a fresh copy of the record, starting the whole process over again. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at dnsimple.com. Want to give dnsimple a try risk free? Visit dnsimple.com slash sign up. Need more information about how DNS works with dnsimple? Check out other videos on our channel and read our comic linked in the description. If you want more information about common DNS records, watch this video next.